good. So during our program this evening, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the My AAC Renewal program and the details associated with it. We're going to talk about the purpose of the app. And this is one of the things that does not appear to be uh, clear to some folks. Uh, we've done some polling and things like that. And based on the feedback that we've received, um, we know that we need to explain the purpose of this uh, a little better. So this is part of the reason why we're doing this webinar this evening. Uh, we're also going to take a look at how the my AC renewal program is different from traditional recertification that uh, has been part of the ASC family for uh, many years now. Uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about how the app works. What is what is the purpose of it? I mean, how does how does this thing work? What are the nuts and bolts behind the app itself? And we want to ask some questions such as why should I subscribe to the program now? You know, when is the best time to get involved? And then we'll also take a look at our private Facebook group. And this is something that is new with this app. Now we encourage you guys to uh, ask questions throughout the broadcast this evening. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can click in the chat box and uh, the guys in the background will be monitoring that and watching that and uh, they will interject from time to time when you do ask some questions or you can simply raise your hand and if you do we'll open up your microphone uh, we have a relatively small group this evening so I think it'll be fairly safe to uh, go ahead and go this direction but uh, we want to talk to you you know this is the reason that we're doing this is we want to try to help you guys to understand how this program works and you as our customers are uh, very important to us and uh, we want to make sure that uh, you have everything you need to know about the program all right, let's start off and talk a little bit about the details behind the MyAC Renewal Program. Now, the MyAC Renewal Program is a brand new concept that we came up with as a team. And actually last summer, we held a pilot with this program. And we had about 325 technicians that were part of the pilot and the pilot lasted for a six month window. During that time period, we did a lot of fun fine tuning, we did a lot of refinement of the way that the program worked, and we did lots of surveying and lots of sampling along the way and received feedback from the technicians that were participating. We took all this information and we continued to hone and refine the program and got it to where it is basically today. Now, based on the feedback and the information that our pilot group gave to us, um, our board of directors authorized an extension of the program and allowed us to enter into what we're calling a beta phase. Now, the beta program, it started in February of this year, and it is slated to run through December of next year. During the beta program, we're going to take a little bit of time to identify if our customers are going to be interested and is this program something that's going to be viable in the future and uh, the only way that we can know is to actually run it and uh, see exactly what happens now one thing about the my AC renewal program is it currently only includes the automobile series of tests so right now a1 through a8 is available for this program. Uh, we are going to be releasing A9 later on this year, sometime in the third or fourth quarter of this year, and then that will give us a full complement of all of the automobile series tests. Now this program is a paid subscription program and it does cost $48 a year. Now this is a flat fee and that $48 will include all the automobile series of tests. So whether you have just one certification or two certifications, or maybe you have all nine automobile certifications, there is one price for everything. And that subscription again is for a 12 month window. Now currently we are in what we're calling a proof of concept and acceptance phase. And basically we have come up with the idea, we have gone through the pilot and it does appear to work and the technicians that participated in the pilot really liked the program. So now we're trying to find out how well do you really like it? And basically, we're asking people to vote. And if you like it, folks are going to open up their wallet, they're going to subscribe, and that is a vote for confidence. You do like the program and uh, you want it to go forward. Um, if you don't like the program, then you don't subscribe. And it simply goes like that. And then hopefully, by the end of our beta program, which is again the end of next year, we will have enough data to determine whether or not we're going to transition this program into full production.
If we do transition the program into full production, that also means that in the future we will be adding additional test titles. And so we get to ask questions about that very often. And at this point, we don't know if this program is actually going to uh, make it or not. Uh, we have had really good response for the participants that are in the program, but obviously we uh, we want more. We want some uh, some better results, and uh, time will tell. Now, to start the program, there is a website that you're going to go to, and it is www.myasrenewal.com. Now, you may ask, well, why do I have to do that? Why can't I just go to the MyASC portal? Why can't I go to the ASC website and just take, a, take care of everything there? Well, that's a really good question. However, ASC is not an app developer. This is something that is uh, very new for us and to assist us going down this journey we hired a outside company to help us. Uh, the company's name is Higher Learning Technologies or HLT and they are well known for their work in the app world and so they custom built a app for us. Uh, they loaded our content into it and from there, we're able to go ahead and provide this service to all of you, our customers. Now, because we are in this beta testing phase and we have been trying to understand the proof of concept on all this, it is not currently integrated into the My ASC portal. The plans are that when we do transition to full production, we will go ahead and uh, incorporate that into the MyASC portal. But as of right now, you do need to go over to the MyASC Renewal website and create an account. To create an account is simple, it's free. All you have to do is go ahead and create a username, which is an email address, a password, and then provide your ASC ID. The reason we need the ASC ID is so that we know what bank of questions to associate with your profile. And then that's it. You will be able to go ahead and participate with a free three-day trial. Now the questions in the three-day trial, they are examples of the questions that you're going to find within the app. Uh, they do not count towards your progress within the app. They are purely there for trial purposes. So you can look at them, you can play around in the app, and it will continue to stay in that trial status until you then go ahead and click over to the subscribe button, and then uh, you can pay for your subscription. And then those questions that come after that will be the questions that are going to count towards your uh, subscription period. So that's the reason why we've got this, and uh, the My AC Renewal website will continue to be in existence at least through the end of next year. And uh, most likely, if we do go to full production, it's going to stick around for just a little while longer while we get everything integrated into the MyASC portal. But eventually, we're going to have it set up so that you will be able to do a more of a single sign-on type situation where you can use your ASC username and your ASC password and be able to access the app. So. John, let's talk a little bit about the purpose of the app. Yeah, thanks, Kevin, and, and welcome, everyone, uh, this evening. Uh, appreciate you taking time out to, to join us. So uh, talking a little bit about the, the purpose of the app, you know, what's the, what's the big idea? Um, <clears throat> what is it that uh, we're hoping to accomplish with this? Well, the three main, you know, the three main uh, benefits for this is learning. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to take a little different approach to this. This is what we talk about. It's a it's a new new way of thinking, uh, learning. This uh, the extension of your certification using the MyIC Renewal app is as much about learning as it is about extending your your credential. Uh, convenience, uh, you know, obviously we want it to be more convenient for you um, than uh, the the traditional certification model of going to the test center and uh, Another main purpose is maintenance. Um, this is maintaining your credential over time, uh, and that's what we talk about, certification without expiration. Um, if you participate in the app uh, and you do it on an annual basis, you'll never be up against a, an, an expiration of your current uh, certifications. So that's the maintenance aspect of it. <clears throat> so as as the uh, the words state in the uh, image here, it, it is. It's all about making you smarter every day because the uh, questions that we're going to have in, in this uh, app 
are going to be they're not going to be questions that we use in the traditional certification test these have been specially created for use in the app um, they're going to be dealing with more emerging technology uh, things that maybe you haven't seen in the shop today but they're in vehicles widely you know uh, presented on the roads today that and that technology you're going to see at some point very in the very near future in your shop so that's part of the learning aspect so you're going to see questions about this emerging technology and you're going to answer those questions through the app on your mobile device or on a pc um, if you don't answer the first time if you don't answer the first question that you get correctly you'll get a second and even a third chance question about that same topic uh, in, in, a, in a pace, and we'll talk about question pacing here in a little bit. The idea is, is that from a learning standpoint, if you answer the first time, the first option of that question incorrectly, you're gonna become aware of technology that's gonna drive you towards learning about that. So when we give you a second chance question about it, it'll give you an opportunity to earn your credits uh, towards the extension of your certification. And we're gonna talk about more about credits here in a minute. Um, another aspect of the learning is rationales. Uh, we're going to offer you for each answer option, after you select your answer choice and click submit, we'll, we're going to give you rationales of why the correct answer is correct from a technical standpoint and why the incorrect answers are incorrect from a from a technical standpoint based on the scenario and the question so there's there's a learning quotient here that you know you're going to be able to see uh, exactly what was going on in that question and why the answer options were uh, were provided um, to determine your level of knowledge of that subject okay but the idea here is isn't, isn't to poke holes in your knowledge it's really to help you to identify gaps in your knowledge of this new and emerging technology if you think about it right now the pace that technology is changing in vehicles we're all scrambling to try to keep up and, and increase our knowledge through every means that we have available for training and education whether we're reading trade publications or going to seminars and and trade you know uh, shows where there's training provided in, in microbursts we're doing everything we can well the app's going to provide you another means for identifying gaps in your knowledge through answering questions and and helping you to understand you know the things that maybe you aren't up on that that are coming uh, to your shop in the very near future and uh, create an awareness for you uh, for things that you need to go brush up on so convenience um, no need to take time off work uh, the questions are going to be delivered right to your mobile, uh, your mobile device um, or your PC, so there's no need to travel to a secure testing center. Again, this is only for recertification, um, so we're going to talk about the differences right in, in just a few minutes. But the, the nice thing about it is questions are delivered to your mobile device and you answer the questions at your own pace. Um, questions are going to be timed. OK, so if it's a text based question, those questions will be at about a two minute pace. Uh, you'll get, be given two minutes on the clock to answer that question. Uh, and in questions with an illustration, you'll be given five minutes uh, to give a little bit more time to to pinch zoom on the on the image and, you know, arrive at your conclusion to the to the solution to that uh, to that problem and, and offer your answer. Um, but the main thing here is convenience that it's delivered to your mobile device. You work at your own pace when you have time. Um, but you don't have to travel to the test center to do it. The whole idea here is, is to renew your previously earned credentials as a maintenance of your credential, okay? Um, right now, the maintenance that we provide for you is going to the test center every five years after ASC sends you uh, a notification that, hey, your certifications are about to expire. And we do that you know, every four and a half years and, and you diligently come back to the test center and, and renew your credential for five years. Different, different way of thinking now, okay? Uh, this is maintenance of your credential through continuous engagement uh, to extend your certification expiration date by using the app, which if you participate in the app year over year, then you essentially have your certification without expiration, uh, the title of our webinar tonight. So uh, again, it's a new way of thinking. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this in, in detail uh, moving forward in the presentation here tonight. So if we can advance the slide. So how is the uh, MyIC renewal program different from traditional certification? Well, as, as we said, you know, and as you all know, traditional certification is good for five years. Okay, so you go to the test center, take your test, you pass, 
you're good for five years. My AC Renewal Program is a 12-month subscription period that offers you a one-year extension of the expiration date of your current credentials. This isn't a replacement for traditional testing, okay? Technicians that are going to earn their credential for the first time, earn an ASC certification for the first time, are gonna have to go to the Secure Test Center. Um, you still have the option of going to the Secure Test Center uh, to earn your recertification. The app is an alternative to that, okay? But this is a different way of thinking. It's a maintenance program, all right? We're not gonna get a five-year renewal with this. Every year, we're gonna get a one-year extension of our current expiration date. And Kevin's gonna give you some real good details about you know, how, to, how to work with that, uh, you know, with your current situation where your expiration dates are uh, with your certifications today. Um, the interesting thing about the, uh, and a point to note about tech of the uh, content that's included, um, we're gonna cover technology that maybe isn't included in the certification test for quite a number of years. Some of the emerging technology <clears throat> really has to shake out before we can get ASC test questions that are fair and equitable to use in the test center environment to determine pass fail. For the app, it's a little different approach. And what we want to use the app for, as I said, is a learning uh, is give you a learning uh, uh, opportunity to be exposed to technology that maybe you aren't aware of. It, again, like I said, to identify gaps in your knowledge of things that are, if they're not in your shop today, they're coming very soon. And so uh, that's where we're going to we're going to deal with you know some more emerging technology uh, for for some of the technology questions that we cover and use in the app. Um, but the idea is, is that it's, this is different because we're going to promote continuous engagement um, for maintaining your certifications at your own pace. You know, as the, as the information's uh, delivered to you uh, onto your mobile device, you know, you can work at your own pace and stay continually engaged with ASE over time rather than just hear from us every four and a half years that, hey, it's time to come back to the test center and, and you know, recertify. Um, so this gives you an opportunity, to, as I said, to extend your certifications on an annual basis so that you have that certification without expiration. So if we can advance the slide. So how does the app work? So when you get a question delivered to you, each question answered that you answer correctly earns you one credit towards your extension. So after earning eight credits, for any given certification that you currently hold, okay? After earning eight credits, your expiration date will be extended one year. So the delivery model is this, that we've, we've landed on through our, through our pilot testing and through our surveys with our pilot users, we came up with this, with this uh, question pacing model, okay? And that is basically, you're gonna get, when you sign up for the app, when you purchase the app, um, automatically you're gonna be given one question for every certification that you currently hold, okay? And subsequent to that, every 30 days, you're gonna be automatically delivered one question. So over the course of a 12 month period, you'll automatically be delivered 12 questions, okay? Um, but what happens if you, like I said, if you answer a question incorrectly, that first time you get a question for engine repair, for example, what, what happens if you answer it incorrectly? 30 days from the day that you answer it incorrectly, you'll get a second chance question about that same technology. So why 30 days? Well, that gives you an opportunity to A, create the awareness of the technology that you're not so familiar with, and B, give you that 30 day period to go get some training material and education about that topic, because we're gonna ask you a second chance question about that very same topic in a different way and test whether you've moved your knowledge needle. And if you've moved your knowledge needle and you answer that question correctly, two things happen. You've learned and you have the, you've had the opportunity to get that credit for that, uh, for that question uh, towards your eight total in order to extend your certification for the year. So if you think about doing the math here real quick, with the second and third chance questions, um, you have up to 36 chances over a 12 month period to earn your eight credits. So what we've learned through the pilot, and uh, I think we're gonna continue to learn through the beta, is this is very attainable. Um, learning's gonna occur, but you're also gonna have a ample opportunity to earn the eight credits that you need for each certification to extend those uh, expiration dates to keep your credential uh, current. Um, one of the things I wanna point out, so the image that you see there, um, 
is an illustration of what it actually the app looks like on your phone. If you haven't uh, participated in the free trial yet, uh, this might be new to you today. Um, but uh, the app's going to let you know when the next questions will be delivered and also give you uh, push notifications to let you know uh, when they've been delivered. OK, so in this case, you can see at the top, it says my certifications. And so it will list these in a menu just like you see here. I've, this person's been delivered 15 total questions. So in engine repair, you can see they've gotten three out of eight uh, complete already. OK, so they got three credits towards their eight uh, in order to extend that certification. The little orange bubble at the top says there's there's a two in there. That means that there's two questions sitting in the queue waiting to be answered at my, at whatever pace this individual chooses to answer those. OK, but the uh, what's what's great about this is it, it gives you an expectation where we say Monday, July 1st. That's the expectation of when you're going to get that automatic delivery of the next uh, first chance question uh, for that month. Um, and you also will get push notifications um, that will let you know when those questions have been delivered to your queue. Now, if you have an Android phone, uh, we've learned that Android, the default for push notifications is set to, to set to yes. So when you download the app from the MyAC uh, from uh, the App Store or the uh, Play Store, if you have an Android phone, it's going to automatically send you push notifications. We've learned if you have an Apple uh, device, when you download the app from the App Store, there's actually an option that you'll select that will say you'll have to select yes to push notifications. And what that'll just give you is a simple little banner at the first of the month or when your questions are delivered that says, hey, you have questions waiting to be answered in the um, ISC Renewal app. So it's kind of a really nice thing, you know, when you pick up your phone in the morning, it's like, oh, hey, my questions got delivered last night. Um, great. I'll put that in, you know, I'll file that in my memory and, you know, I'll answer some questions here when, when I'm ready. So uh, the push notifications are really wonderful. So between the push notifications and then the uh, and then on the uh, the uh, certification tag uh, where we give you an expectation of when you're going to get your questions, we're trying to help you manage your work over your 12 month subscription period. All right, John, thanks. That's some real good information. Um, I'd like to pause for just a second right now. Um, are there any questions out there? If you do have any questions, please feel free to either type them into the chat box or the question box, and we'll try to answer any of those questions you may have to this point, or simply click on the raised hand next to your name, and we'll go ahead and open up your microphone, and we will answer any questions that you have. So while we're waiting for those questions to show up, this actually kind of leads me to a question that we have received about the app very often. And the question is, hey, I've got time left on my current certs. Why should I subscribe to the app now? Now we have heard this from people calling up. We've also heard this in the surveys that we have uh, conducted with the users within the group. And it's a really, it's a valid question. You know, why should I do this? Well, what do you think? It doesn't look like we've got any questions. Dave, did you see anything there? I'm not seeing anything on my end. I uh, don't see any questions right now, Kevin. But one thing I just wanted to uh, bring up that I think maybe needs to be reinforced as well is we keep talking about the app, but this is available for desktop delivery as well, right? Yes, it is. Yep, it sure is. So there's a couple ways to get it. You can get it on a mobile version. And again, like John said, we can get it over at the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store. Uh, but you have to have an account created before you can download it. If you go to download it and then you put in your ASC ID, it's not going to work. You have to create an account over at the myascrenewal.com website. And then you can go ahead and download the mobile versions or you can just use the PC version. And uh, that is simply accessed at myascrenewal.com. And so uh, either way, you'll be able to uh, access the app and it just depends on your personal preference. All right, well, since we don't have any questions, so let's answer the question that's on the screen right now. Why should I subscribe to the app now? Now I wanna warn everybody that this is a totally different approach. Now, as John said, this is not a replacement for recertification. Recertification is still handled the way that it has always been handled at a secure testing facility. This program is about maintenance. 
So there's going to be things that are going to be different. There's going to be different aspects, different characteristics of this program, and that's part of the reason why we're here this evening. We want to go ahead and explain those things to everybody and uh, let you see exactly how those differences work. Now we've got a couple different scenarios and most likely you will fall into one if not a couple of these scenarios here this evening. Our first scenario is for Tech A. Now Tech A is a technician that has at least two to five years before their certifications are going to expire. So in this example Tech A their certification was getting ready to expire in 2018. So Tech A went to the secure testing facility in December of 2018, recertified on all of the certifications that they had obtained. And at that point, their credential is current for five years. So by certifying in 2018, the credential will now expire in December of 2023. Now, at this point, our technician has one of two options. Technician can go ahead and head back to a secure testing facility in 2023, and they can go ahead and recertify. Or, if they choose, they can join the MyACA renewal program. And this is where the maintenance side of things begin. So this technician, Technician A, heard about the app and decided to join the app program in June of 2019. So he took out their three-day trial, liked it, went ahead, subscribed to the app, and at that point, the subscription begins. Now, as John was talking about earlier, for every question you answer correctly, you will earn one point. So if you do the math in your head kind of quickly here, if we deliver a question once every 30 days, how long is it going to take to earn eight credits? It's going to take roughly about eight months, right? And that's that's if you are really good and you answer every single question correct the first time. So our technician here, Tech A, he went ahead and did exactly that. He answered his eight questions. And this happens right around maybe April or May of 2019. So at the point that the technician earns eight credits, the expiration date of their current credential is going to be extended one calendar year. And so if you remember, previously our technician was going to expire in December of 2023. Now, by completing the program, the technician's expiration on their credential is going to be 2024. And this again goes back to our discussion about certification without expiration. If the technician continues down the same path, so they go ahead and renew their subscription, they answer their questions, at the end, after they have earned eight credits, the certification gets extended one more year. So in this scenario, you can see right around that April or May of 2021, technician is going to earn an expiration date of 2025. So again, they've got a five-year credential that this is going to continue and continue and continue. So that's where the maintenance aspect of this program comes from. Any questions so far? John, anything else you want to add? No, I think that pretty pretty well sums it up, um, folks, because that's really what we're that's really kind of what we're talking about with our tagline tonight is uh, is the certification without expiration. So if for every year that you continue your participation in the app and engage yourself in the opportunity to to learn uh, with you know some of the added benefits of other than just extending your credential, but the learning aspect that's provided through the app uh, and some of the other value points. Um, that's where we talk about the certification without expiration. Uh, you'll never get one of those expiration notices from ASE ever again because you'll continue, you know, you'll con you'll continue your certification maintenance in perpetuity. And it's probably a good thing to point out that the way the program is designed is that you will never have more than five years of 
expiration ahead of you. So whether you go back to a testing center or you subscribe to the app, uh, you cannot bank the time. The subscription is good for one year and you will have a maximum amount of five years. And that's, and again, in this scenario where the technician recertified in December of 18, joins the program in June of 19, and then continues to move forward. That's where that five-year window will continue. All right, let's look at another scenario. Now, in this particular situation, we got to hit the brakes. We got to stop and think for just a moment here. In our second scenario, we have a technician whose credential is expiring in less than a year. Now, this can happen to some of you. You know, some of you that are in attendance in our webinar this evening, this might be the exact situation that you are in. In this situation, our best recommendation to you is to go ahead, if you are expiring by the end of this year, you could be expiring next week, depending on uh, where you sit. Uh, June and December are the two expiration windows for your credentials. But if you're expiring in less than 12 months, we recommend you go ahead and head over to the secure testing facility. Go ahead and get your credential current for an additional five years, and then you're gonna be ready to roll. Now, the reason for this is quite simple. Because the way this program is set up, because it is designed for continuous engagement, if you subscribe to this program with less than eight months to go before your, your credential expires, it's mathematically impossible to get your credential current. And then in that type of a situation, your credential is going to expire. And by no means do we ever want that to happen. We know some of you out there, your credential is what allows you access to service information. And so if your credential expires, you get bumped from the service information and now you can't do your job. So this is the reason why we want everybody, if you have less than a year, the best approach is going to be to go to that testing center. And then after that is complete, you can see that your expiration date would now be out at December of 2024 if we're talking about a situation that's going on today. So after you have done this, you've gone through and you've got your credential current, now is the ideal time to go ahead and join the MyASC Renewal App Program. Like we showed you in our previous scenario with Tech A, Tech B does exactly that. He goes ahead and subscribes to the app. He earns his eight credits, and you can see that's going to happen somewhere probably in the first quarter of 2021. And then at that point, his credential would then be extended. If you remember, it was previously December of 2024. It now gets bumped out to 2025. And then with that continuous engagement, the expiration date is going to discontinue to increase year after year. And again, this is where we get certification without expiration. Now, what's nice about it, the program as well is we all know life happens. And if life does happen to you for some reason and you either fall behind on your app or for whatever reason, maybe you're between jobs and you decide you don't want to subscribe to the app, no harm, no foul. Your expiration date will not change from the date that you have already earned. So in this case here, it's going to stay at 2028 until 2028 arrives. And then at that point, um, you'll have to then either recertify and get that five-year extension or subscribe to the app at least a year before the expiration date, and you'll be able to move forward. All right, any questions about our second scenario? All right, doesn't look like we have anything on my end here. So let's take a look at a third scenario. Now in this particular scenario, we've got a situation where the technician has expired credentials. And you know what? This can happen. We see this happening fairly often. A technician, for example, maybe has earned their master credential and they used to work on a whole bunch of different things. And then they've done through, gone through some job changes, different uh, locations, different uh, type of a work environment. And now they're not doing the same things that they used to do. Um, I'll use A2 as, as an example, automatic transmissions, because that's one of the ones we get a lot of calls at uh, ASC about. 
So in this case, our technician here, since he's no longer working on automatic transmissions, back in 2014, he went back to recertify. And unfortunately, he was not successful. And so what happened? His A2 certification expires. And that credential has uh, been expired since 2014. So what can this technician do? Well, there's a couple different things. Of course, the technician can go to the secure testing facility, can go ahead and attempt to pass the recertification test. However, if the technician is not doing transmission work, this might be a tall challenge. You know, there is a lot of things that are going on and the changes in automatic transmissions over the past few years has been uh, pretty exponential. And so if you don't touch these things, you don't work on these things, you might have a challenge. But there is another option. And that is you can go ahead and attempt to earn your credential back using the app. Now, if you do have expired credentials, you are more than welcome to use the app. There is no penalty for doing this. However, if you do decide to use the app, remember we talked earlier about one price, flat fee for all certifications you have previously earned. You will be getting questions. And in our example here, you'll get questions for A2. During this time period, while you are participating within the app, your credential will remain expired. However, as soon as you earn your eighth credit, at that point, we're going to bring your credential back to a current status. And in this example, the expiration date will be bumped out to December of 2021. Now you may look at that and go, huh? How does that happen? I have an expired credential from 2014. Why are you pushing it all the way out to 2021? Well, here's our idea behind all of this. The hope is at the end of your subscription, you're going to resubscribe. And during that resubscription period of one year, we want to ensure that your credential will never expire during that resubscription period. If you choose not to resubscribe, that's okay. You don't have to. However, within six months of the end of your initial subscription, your credential will then go ahead and expire. But in this case here, by moving it out to December of 2021, look at the timeline. So our technician goes ahead and resubscribes in June of 2020, and that subscription would expire in June of 2021. By the time the technician earns eight credits, it's probably going to be somewhere around the second quarter of 2021. Well, if that's the case, and I had the expiration date set earlier, the technician potentially could run the risk of having an expired credential. And then at that point, they're not going to be able to uh, have that current credential. And we talked about some of the problems that that can cause. So our goal here was convenience. As John was talking to us about, about this, convenience, learning is obviously paramount, and then maintenance of your credential. And this is a way to get that expired credential back into a current status. Now, what's great about this is as long as you continue to play the game, you go ahead and continue to answer your questions and earn credits, your expiration date will continue to bump out. So in this second subscription, we push your expiration out to 2022. And then of course, it will then continue from that point on. So you renew your subscription again, you complete the subscription, you earn the eight credits, you go to 2023, and so on down the line. All right, well, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you here in these three scenarios. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them in or raise that hand. We'll go ahead and open up your microphone and uh, be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. If you do not have any questions, the next thing I wanna to talk to you a little bit about is the Facebook group. Now the Facebook group is a added benefit of the MyAC Renewal Program. Now, this is a private group, and it is only available for technicians who have a subscription to the MyAC Renewal app. If you are in a trial status, you can look from the outside in, 
but you are not part of the group. The reason why we made this a private Facebook group is pretty simple. We wanted to give technicians a area that they could go ahead and network with other technicians. But we also wanted to give technicians an open forum to discuss the questions within the app. As you may or may not know, the app has a chat feature on it. And after you answer the question, a little chat bubble will appear on the bottom of your mobile device, or you'll see a link on your PC to go ahead and, uh, ans and ask questions. Well, the chat feature has worked out really well. Technicians have uh, put comments in there. They don't agree with the question. They've never seen this. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that have been said in those chat bubbles. But the problem becomes that very few people are actually seeing the comments. And then worse off, they're not being replied to or responded to. Now, the reason for this is quite simple. We have a little over a thousand some odd technicians that are participating in the program to date. And that's great. We're really happy to have uh, that many folks that are participating. But if you remember how John was telling us that there are 36 chances that you get with each certification. Well, that means that there are 36 questions for each certification. And the app is designed to scramble those questions. So you might get the first question, I'm going to get the 13th question, and John may get the 18th question, and Dave could get the 36th question. And if you answer the question correctly, then basically you're waiting for the next month's question, and you don't see those comments. So what we have done is go in and we take a look at the comments that get placed on the questions. And in some cases, uh, folks are struggling a little bit. And an example of that is on the right-hand side of your screen. There was a question, or I should say there is a question within the app that discusses an IHX. And technicians were making comments that, you know, this is manufacturer specific, it doesn't exist. There's all kinds of different things that were being stated. So we went ahead, posed the question to the Facebook group. And right now there's a little over 100 uh, technicians that are part of the Facebook group. And we paraphrase the question. So that way it tries to maintain the integrity of the original question, but it still gets the point across. And you can see that Jim was able to answer for us what an IHX is. It's an internal heat exchanger. However, if you read CJ's comments and Aaron's comments, you'll see that they got the question wrong, but they learned about the IHX. And what that is going to do for them is in the future, if one of these systems comes into their shop, they've already got now a little bit of knowledge about what the system is. So what we're trying to do until we get enough participants involved to be able to answer those questions at the question level, we're going to go ahead and continue to bring these questions up into the Facebook group, and we're going to let the group uh, go ahead and discuss them openly. The only thing that we ask is that people do not post screenshots, because we do want to try to, again, maintain the integrity of the question. And uh, again, this is another reason why this is a closed group, because we don't want these questions just disappearing and floating around out there uh, in the general public. Another cool feature about the Facebook group is this is going to allow the participants to have direct access to ASE staff. It is being monitored by various individuals within the staff. We go ahead and check it from time to time throughout the day. And if you do have questions, if you do have comments, you've got a direct line to us, as well, of course, as you can email us. But uh, sometimes the questions are really good. And it's something that other people are wanting to know about. So the Facebook group becomes a convenient place to ask those type of things. You can also take a look here at Mark and Jacob's comments. Um, they are really good and other technicians have been jumping on board and answering the questions. Uh, you know, Mark talks about being a fleet mechanic and that he is unfamiliar with some of the content, but it helps to keep him sharp. And he loves what this app is doing and how it works. And so he's encouraging us to keep it coming. Jacob, on the other hand, he got questions about a CVT transmission. And being that he works in a Kia dealership, 
he doesn't have much exposure to a CVT. And so he was asking, where can I find good information about this new technology? And some of the other uh, technicians within the group were able to point him in that direction. One of the enhancements that we are going to be looking at for the future is we want to try to provide additional information about where somebody can obtain training on the particular content that we ask. It's a future enhancement. Some some of the questions have it a little bit here and there today, but in the future, we would like to try to partner up with a couple of different training providers that can uh, provide you that additional information that you're looking for. So when you see one of those questions, uh, you'll be able to uh, be prepared for them. And then, of course, when that vehicle or system comes into your shop, you'll absolutely be ready for it, or at least have some kind of an awareness so it's not totally foreign to you and you spend a lot of time kind of messing around to, to figure out what's going on. All right, folks, well, we have come to uh, the end of the presentation portion of our uh, webinar today. You guys got any questions out there? You've been kind of quiet this morning or this evening, and uh, I know it's getting late. It's uh, definitely getting late out here on the uh, East Coast, and uh, I know people are probably getting ready to pack it in and call it an evening. But again, if you have any questions at this point, uh, please feel free to let us know and uh, we'd like to answer any questions we can for you uh, before we close out the webinar this evening. So uh, Dave, anybody typing anything in? I do not see anything in the questions pane nor in the chat box. All right. Well, that tells me one of two things. Either we've done a really good job and we've gone through and been uh, pretty thorough here and uh, be able to answer their questions before they ask them, or two, they really don't know what to ask, and uh, that's okay. It's been a long day, I know, for everybody, and uh, it's uh, not a bad thing if you don't have a question. Uh, again, we just appreciate everybody spending the last uh, you know, 45 minutes or so with us to learn more about this uh, project. Um, John, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, just as a uh, just as parting comments. Uh, again, thank you everybody for for uh, joining us tonight. Um, again, we we want to take an opportunity just to present this to you, give you more information about this uh, exciting new program. This program is for you. Um, we are you know we're listening and being responsive to input we've gotten from technicians over the years. Uh, ASE just celebrated its 47th birthday on the 12th of June this year. So if anybody's interested, we were singing happy birthday to uh, ASE at our board meeting uh, here a couple of weeks ago. So, um, but this program's for you and uh, we really appreciate your feedback uh, and your input uh, about your praises, your criticisms, all of your input is important to us and you can give that to us a number of ways, as Kevin said, through the Facebook group, through the chat uh, within the app, and also at the email address you see identified on this page at myasrenewal at ase.com. So make note of that. That is a direct line to ASE staff uh, for all things concerning the app. And so we would appreciate and, and welcome your, uh, your feedback. Um, it's only through your feedback that we're going to be able to grow this program and, and make any modifications that, you know, meet the, the uh, cumulative needs of, of you, our technician audience, that we're serving uh, with our credentialing program. So, again, we, we appreciate your, your support and your attention tonight and hope that this was a valuable presentation to you. All right, everyone. Well, with that, I just want to wish everyone a very pleasant and safe evening. I hope that uh, you guys have a good Friday tomorrow. And uh, hopefully with uh, 4th of July coming around next week, you guys have a safe 4th of July as well. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up here from uh, the Leesburg, Virginia area. Again, my name is Kevin. I'm here with John and Dave, and we appreciate your time. Have a good night.